I was uh, I was working on getting into this cult meeting. Uh, I got my butt kicked about seven thousand times. Um, even if I had the hood, I didn't know what to say to get in. So I've come back to that initiate I was talking to before, and the initiate is going to tell me the passphrases because I'm smart and I can talk him into things. So. He's been practicing the passphrases, knows them backwards and forwards. We get so nervous every time he talks about repeating them to the acolyte. You can practice on me. Okay, here we go. First question. State your name and purpose. Answer. My name belongs to the god and my hand to their service. Second question. What company do you seek? I seek the company of shadows that our labor may remain secret. Tell me of your labors. To see that the craft of kith and wilder does not disturb what bones the gods have buried. How do we know your purpose? You shall know it by the confession of my tongue, the deeds of my hand, and the oath on my soul. Riddles upon riddles. What bones the gods have buried. It's very dramatic, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. Please continue. And how is your oath guarded? It is sealed by the leaden key. Well, that wasn't so hard. Sounds like you got it. All right. So we're going to save. Um, now, I'm not sure if this game is going to pull... Uh, uh, Final Fantasy VI and make me remember all that stuff, or if it's just going to, um, or if it's just going to give me more dialogue options that I didn't have before. So let's do what we know we need to do. We'll put the hood there and we'll save, and we'll don the hood and mask and continue to the chamber alone. I've been waiting on your reports. Quickly now, state your name and purpose. All right, so it's telling them to me. So it isn't. Um, it, it is. It's a. It's not a multiple choice. Like it's not like my name belongs to. Like it doesn't give me um, like fake uh, options here. What company do you seek? Is that an offer? It's the company of shadows that our labors may remain secret. Tell me of your labors. I'd rather show you. Ha ha. To see the craft of Kith and Wilder. How do we know your purpose? I asked you first. And how is your oath guarded? Welcome, attendant. Tell me of your exploit. <coughs> in your mind, you see a building magnificent with trellises and tiles located on a pristine boulevard. The wealthy and learned to scroll in and out. Scroll in and out. <laughs> they stroll in and out, trading knowledge and coin. Does he wait still? Someone waits. Prisoner by choice. Did they arrive? <coughs> the Acolyte's vision takes you out of Defiance Bay into a town in the wilderness with a water mill. A signpost on one of the paths leads Deerford. Several figures huddled together. Yes? That's uncertain? Yes. Your information shall be relayed. Now, for your next task. The ruins fade from your mind, and their place is a palimpsest of a neighborhood. Palimpsest is um, like several things overlaying each other. Rundown estates are cobbled around a cemetery and ancient tower. Savage shapes prowl the streets, and in the tower, a man hunches over a strange mechanism. You can't see him clearly, but there's something unnatural about him. Stop him. And above all, don't let him meet her. A woman, deathly pale, with a scar over her heart. The acolyte shows you a door at the base of the tower, a seemingly impenetrable slab of stone and copper. When she shows you the invisible split between the perfectly matched halves, you understand how the copper veins convert a command into action. The command comes to your mind, a surprising familiarity about it. You know how to open the door. Have you any questions, attendant? No, I'm good. Alright. Is there anything else in here I can do? Mm. What's in this barrel? Oh, magic item. Excellent. Torque of Defiance. And they don't they don't care that I'm just walking around stealing their stuff. I did earn some taxes though. That's exciting. Let's upgrade the keep. Oh, upgrade's already in progress. Fine. Yeah. All right, well, we did it, so that's fun. Here, put this on. You look cool. Hmm. 
All right, so now we can leave. Now, I'd like to... I'm not going to leave right away. I'm going to go back to town. Where'd that torque go? Defiance and concentration. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to give it to this dude. Don't oh, take your cape off. I can't wear it. Oh, only usable by a ranger. Good. Well, more magic items for you, my dear. Yeah. A moment, please. I feel I should explain myself. All right. About my episode in the catacombs. There's something I should have told you earlier. Cross your arms. Wait. I meant no harm. I thought I could keep it to myself. When we resolve the matter of your soul, we would also address my... problem. I also have an awakened soul. But unlike yours, mine is a presence that shares my senses and my skin, making herself manifest at the most unwelcome times. Oh, he's possessed by Piani. Good. He closes his eyes and grits his teeth. His lips quiver and twitch with a vestige of some internal debate. Several seconds later, he opens his eyes again. They're watery and bloodshot. I'm sorry. I've tried to learn to control Isselmir. I've gotten stronger, but so has she. Artless, uncouth, a creature of rash impulses and feeble faculties. She wags her impertinent tongue when she should listen. Hey, this one's fit to boil. Hard to get this gaff over anything tisn't to do with books and spell speak. I have none of her memories spared, spared me that much, but her coarse manner is an intolerable hill speak, suggest a provincial from a very, very long time ago. She tends to serve as a hair's breadth from conflict, and the fuses burn down and teeth are on edge. When she shows up, she doesn't stop to gauge the situation, she just acts. She seems reckless. It's it exactly, you recall the way she'd go to those villagers in Gilded Vale, she doesn't think, and doesn't back down. Trying to suppress that has been my problem for years. Why didn't you say something sooner? I to keep her a secret a very long time ago. Those with awakened souls are shunned, mistrusted. And after your experience with Meowald, I'm certain you can see why. You need to be careful. It's gonna be a problem? Merely an annoyance. Although... He lowers his voice and clasps his hand by his back. Minute twitches and spasms along his arm betrays fidgeting. Defiance Bay is said to have an entire institution dedicated to the study and cure of soul-related ailments. Oh, that one we were at before. Since our journeys have already brought us to the city, perhaps we could speak with someone there. Thank you. This has been a great burden. Got it. All right, experts on awakening. I think a sanitarium, probably. They have animancers and stuff. Let's go to them. And go check it out. To Brackenbury. Yes, you're all tired and shit, I know. Let's go to the charred barrel. So why is it not the charred barrel? Hello, Thristwin. A young elf is dressed in gaudy robes. He seems ready to cast off. Well, he just wants to get naked. He picks at a heavily brocaded sleeve and adjusts the gold chain around his neck. Oh, baller. Looks up at you. Send you to run me out of town. You can tell I'm not going anywhere without that medallion. Oh, and I need to go turn in that other quest. I completely forgot. Um, well, we'll deal with this in a second. I told Sarah I wouldn't let her sell it, but that's your hero about then save yourself the trouble. I'm not after you, but tell me what the problem is. Sarah's a courtesan at the Salty Mast. She's been working together for a year now. I find a note with more money than sense. Fill him up with liquor and send him her way. They have a good time, and Sarah takes your fee and a little extra. Hundred coppers here, a trinket there. It's a bounty for us, and these lord and ladies never notice anything missing. 
Well, no harm done then. We always split the bounty till a week ago. She takes a necklace off some noble. It's an Inguithin medallion, damn near priceless. That relic is sacred to my clan. She won't part with it for any sum I could afford. And even if I wanted to, I can't go home without it. That's a hard thing. I'll see about getting the medallion. I'll see about being a PC. You're from Gilded Vale? Then you're close to home. <laughs> close can mean a lot of things. Surely you'll go back when this is all over. Dunno. Guess that all depends. Alright, so I need to go back to Copper Lane to tell that dude. Tell him about what happened to his girlfriend turned amulet. That's her new name now, amulet. Um, where was he? He was around here somewhere. Dalton, there you are, friend. Dalton, the worst James Bond. Everyone used to wear this. Where'd you get it? From Helig. She's kept her soul trapped inside for decades. It's time to set her free. No, please, after searching for her for so long, just to have her close to me. Visit her in my dreams, that would be enough. Enough for you, but what about her? You keep her trapped in this amulet for the sake of your own comfort? You're no better than the wizard who imprisoned her. You're right, please, let me do it. He draws a club with trembling hand and crushes the amulet. As the gem cracks, you feel essence rush from it. Thank you for showing me a reason. Perhaps she'll wait for me in the next life. By the flame, she won't have to wait long. Dark. And then he gives me... A club! A one-handed fast weapon. That's cool. Let's give it to Omre here. Oh, I can't equip the same. It's not slots. It's like full weapon sets. That's interesting. Alright, let's try him with this one. What does it do? It's like, uh... 12 to 17 crush. Deals extra damage to prone and stunned. Oh, that's cool. So I can knock a guy down and then hit him again. Excellent. It's a good, uh... Good item to obtain. So, back to Brackenbury. And, uh, I'm gonna rest at the inn. And then we'll go check out the sanitarium and see what we can find there. Hmm. Begging your pardon? Oh, it's you! Good to see you well. It's been a rough few days here. Let me find this place. They're good enough to hire us both. Things have been wonderful. I can't tell you how much we appreciate what you've done. Hey, no problem, Naunton. Yeah. Abelheart Scarion. What brings you to the charred barrel? Let's see your rooms. Let's sleep in the criminal's getaway. That doesn't sound like sketchy at all. Okay. Have you ever chased a skirt wizard? Or do you merely hide by Don't pawn your personal problems off on me. They Snap. will use you. Cast you off when it suits them. Never speak another word to you. Maybe they just don't answer to fiery whore. Yeah, you tell them. <laughs> Maybe they don't answer to fiery whore. That is... That's accurate. I mean, I'm sure some people don't mind being called that, or enjoy it, in fact. But probably not a good place to start. Alright, 
Let's talk to Ethelmore here. Good day to you. Head Warden Macklemore. Many of their many have their intrusions been into our affairs. One can seldom be certain whether they've meddled or the climate is struck on its own. I might even be a severe gift. Your odds with the leaden key as well? They have something I need. That isn't knowledge, they're seldom keen to part with it. I won't know until I've met them. Speak first to their animancers. I don't actually care about how he became a statue, he's just a statue. We're an old institution as far as Dyerwood goes. Dyerwood goes is our 94th year. As many cities, the growth of Defiance Bay brought with it a host of problems. One of the worst was those born with ill-favored souls. Brackenbury was a natural fit. It was growing, there was a lot of money here back then. Because I'm just trying to get him to tell me that he can help my companion, that he can help Aloth. But in time, it was forgotten. Since then, we've been at the forefront of Animancy's resurgence, played host to many gifted researchers, and pushed the boundaries of our knowledge in ways we never thought possible. Blah, 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 blah. I am a statue. Representative in the palace. Does anyone here know anything about awakenings? Here we go. An Animancer on the lower floor named Bell Sage. Yeah. Isn't... isn't... Isn't Bell Sage a Pokemon? Bell Sage. Alright, let's see what we can find. I think I remember seeing her here. Yeah. Oh, Bell Sage. I get it. Moon paces back and forth, feet crunching on the soft red carpet. He almost walks into you. Kosi, here I am looking hard for answers in my research. I do not see the kith standing in front of me. I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. Ack, that would be me. Though the research subjects would be more of an expert in counting floorboards. I like how colorful she is. I would like to transfer Adamancy's success in buttressing pre awakened souls to soothing those whose souls have already been awake, but I need subjects. You're in luck, I have a volunteer. I don't know about this. Come on, man, don't be a wimp. All you must do is stand in that cage. I beg your pardon? You know what the thing is used for. You belong to the last document of this office. I think now they upgrade him to a cell. Again, I jest. So, I need you to relax. Sit here. Try to relax, and don't try too hard. Then you will not be relaxing. Indeed. Then you must also wear these. A little cold with the copper will help conduct your essence. Now I'll examine your soul through my scope. It's fitted with Adra lenses, cut to different thicknesses and concavities. By manipulating them, I find the angle and density that allow me to track the anomalies in your soul. This sounds weird. How exciting. I've never seen this sort of thing performed. It kind of peers at the device with interest. It seems suitably complicated. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Does this mean we'll get to talk to Islamir more? I like that lady. I find this cutting interloper. I'm sure we won't hear any of it. Mm, very well. Tell me something personal from a time before your awakening. There's nothing to tell. The normal child living in the Sith wood. With Lord Vader and Darth Maul. What do you remember about your home? As you speak to Aeloth, you feel your own voice like a bell in your chest that tolls softly, luring him into the midst of his own memory. Bella Sage doesn't seem to notice anything, but as if your words are soothing his essence, untangling its many threads. Ooh, hypnosis. Comfortable. Modest. Quiet when mother is away, which is most of the time quiet enough to the clink of glass on wood, which is when I know to be most careful. Father's good about hiding the bottles. Mother, when she's home, is good at pretending not to notice them. Not oh, an elf with a drinking problem. That's interesting. Tell us about the time you awakened. I'm in my fifth year of training. Mother is home. I can let my guard down a little because when she's around, he's usually only angry with her. But he's heard that I have had trouble casting missiles, that my flame shields are unstable. He's furious and I've failed. Mother's presence reminds him she has failed too. Then he gets beat up. I need show. He's hypnotizing himself with his old memory. You gotta bring him out of it. Quickly, I almost have it. You're safe, everything's fine. He's near safe and I hop upon him. That said, I'm seeing a shift in the essence, spreading and congealing. Keep talking. What brought you here? 
Cracking bones and voices high and higher. That warm molasses feeling that crips down your gut when crisis is nigh. Belthetta, we have flares of a distinct essence. I'm trying to get the two of them talking. He's only needing me, hiding in his own bone bag like a turtle in his shell. I never turned it over to you. Where he ebbs, the other flows. She usurps me in my own body. Yeah. I was awakening when I'm stuck with you. I like this. This is cool. And it's really cool. It's a nice inversion of the usual trope where it's like, um, like a woman gets beat up by her husband or her father and she gets possessed by like a strong, tough man who can like help her fight. They've, they've inverted the masculine and feminine expectation here where Aloth is the one who is like weak and needing help. And this like fiery woman, uh, flew into him to, uh, uh, to assist with her spirit. Very cool. Triggered by black bile. Subject's melancholy is to blame. <laughs> That's out her horse shit. Doesn't seem she got one thing right. Oh yes, never mind my years of training. I suppose you have a better explanation. I think it's only as related to a potential source of trouble. Yeah, so I never... Bill sees frowns at her notes, tapping her cheek with a quill and making a grand show of concentration. You, can't s <laughs> you catch her stealing a glance at you over the pages. So that's cool. So she's like, I don't really know. Maybe you have an answer. She steps in when you, she determines you're in danger. Got a lot of lot to process. Thank you for your help, Dianea. I hope this has been as useful to you as it has for me. I have material worth publishing. Maybe the toast of Revua, Fentry Aloth. Oh, Aloth is his last name. Or Fentry means mister. Advancing the right wise principles of animancy, just what you've always wanted. As you turn to leave, you catch a darting movement at the corner of your eye. Bill is just humming to herself, still occupied with the scope, but Aloth is holding her notes. He's just about to tuck them in a cloak when he catches you watching. He holds a finger to his lips, his eyes wide and imploring. Please, I don't want my personal information published like this, especially not after her nonsense. No, you get your explanation, she gets her research. That was the deal. I'm now I'm going to help you explain this one, scholar boy. Yeah! I like it. I like I like his story. I like the character, and I think it's um, it's been doing some cool stuff. So that's that's neat. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna continue exploring. Uh, I want to talk. Uh, I want to talk to um, some of the other people that uh, do research in here. I'm looking for oh Ripley. All right. <coughs> so that's two. Um, there's a bishop. There's a Ripley. If we see a Hudson or um, a Hicks, or a Newt anywhere, uh, keep an eye out for an Ash. Hail, traveler. So skittish woman. I'm Master Azo's assistant. You know more about that, but in the middle of an exper... I mean, busy with patients. You'll be able to see him until he comes out from the patient ward. Is he busy with patients or running some sort of experiment? Since this is not my place to gossip, I'm sorry. Only Master Azo and Head Warden Aethelmore, but he's, you know, a statue now. Well, that, that was easy. Alright, it's obviously this dude. Hey, Vasquez, <laughs> do you ever get mistaken for a man? Nope. Do you? Alright, head warden statue guy. Experiments. Cademan Azo is in charge of patient welfare now. He's not authorized to run any more experiments. I am disappointed in Cademan. I was hoping he'd be the one to guide your inquiry. Be in his office for the patient ward. I'm granting you immediate access so you can find him. Tread carefully in the wards. Crazy people might attack you.
So here's the thing, and, and I'm thinking we might not be able to get too much into it, but we can talk a little bit about it. Um, the way the way that um, the way that games handle um, like mental health is a little um, it can be a little problematic, as you might imagine. Um, you know, sometimes it's just like, oh, there's there's insane people and they're just crazy and babbling and run around and tear their clothes off and rub their shit on the walls. Um, and most games, even games that expressly want to be um, about that topic, don't treat mental health very well. Um, you know, your character, they, they throw around like your characters are crazy. So it's crazy characters, crazy people. Um, fantasy games often say, well, they're, they're crazy because of, you know, magic. Um, but I think that, I, mean, I don't know, we'll see. Like, we'll see how this game is. They haven't really done, I mean, these, these are crazy people because of magic, according to the game. But we'll see how they, how they treat them. A curved spine twists this woman's posture forward. Her hair, greasy hair draped over her large eyes like vines. You must be visiting someone. Then noting her pain, she adds, a friendly visit, I hope. Do you know where I might find Azo? I think I've seen her around today, but check the laboratory. She has a wall with his office. What do you know about this guy? I like him very much. Look at us like vermin, but Azo treats us like human, even the very sick. It's too bad what they did to him. There was an accident. Uh oh. So this is interesting. So she's, yeah, she's in the asylum, um, but is, like, in, in control of her faculties. Like, we're having a conversation. She's not, like, talking in funny voices. You have the drone to solve the legacy, but that's hogwash. He was a bit of a showman. He loves his homeland. I like also that the game has done this thing where they're, like, They're they're like here's here's a um, here's an NPC and here's some stuff that might make you hate them and then so they're like here's this guy uh, Azo and he does experiments and you're like oh shit experiments I know about those and you go and talk to the guy and you're like well we're gonna go kill this dude but now I'm talking to an NPC that's like no he was he was a good guy but something bad happened to him he wasn't one to speak of his work he told me to figure out a way to create a soul not a soul exactly mind you how do you put a proxy it's a machine that drew energy out of the ether. Can you imagine? Point is, it's going to help with the legacy. It's going to make Holoborn into something. So he made the wicked, I assume. Just finish what you're saying. Public demonstration. He was locked in his office, turning away visitors. Stop seeing patients. I'm glad they're letting him treat people again. Idleman, who says he was only half a soul, and finally collecting the faces of others because he believed his own to be a false one. Oh, yes. Nothing they didn't volunteer for. So, Azo, a number of patients volunteer for new therapy. North Ward has the most trouble cases. It's Graham I see them talking to the most. He was always a bit of a wild one. Why are you here? I don't want to say you'll think less of me. I'm listening. I haven't been kind to anyone, really. I try not to think of it as personal. Lost my husband and both boys in the Saints War. My daughter, the legacy, took her before she was ever mine. I may do. What else can you do? Moved into a tiny place in Andra's gift, got by mending clothes on the kindness of strangers. No woman comes in with a fancy gown. Reminded me of something. Oh, she was awakened, so she remembered being... A noble in a previous life. It was poison knowing that. So I came here. Was that a break into a state? Silly thing to worry about, but I can't get past it. So she's poor now. She remembers in a past life not being poor, and that it's like breaking, breaking her a little bit. Nobody deserves to go through what you've gone through. I hope not. Can't even imagine the monster deserves what half the patients here go through. Okay. Yeah. Let us investigate the patient ward. Interview Graham in the North Ward. So this is uh, this guy's lab. So that was good. That's a good start. Someone who does have a mental illness issue, but it doesn't totally cripple them, right? Like she's she's got this problem. She acknowledges that she has a problem, and she's seeking help for it, um, which I think I is. 
I mean, that's that's a really great. Uh, it's a great start. It's a, it's it's oh, nice shit. to know that they're treating it with some, the the NPC that NPC at least with some respect. All right, Cademan Azo. Round face balding man turns to face you. His upper lip is pulled upward by his pointed nose, exposing his upper teeth when he scowls. What is the meaning of this? I like his voice. Yes, well, Ethelmore hasn't much done any good for anybody since he had his soul moved to an inanimate object. So I fail to see why I would let him sway me. If animancers all follow the commands of their leaders, wherever they be, we'd all be as backward and willfully ignorant as Rid Saris. We would know nothing about life. I'm just imagining this guy's voice is like a lemon grab from Adventure Time. 70 years asylum. Our leaders guide us, and without them we risk losing our way. If this man would strike off on his own, then let him fend for himself without the benefit of the sanitarium. Is that a reason to stop trying? Shall we remain in the dark until the end of time and have the last breath of the last person alive be breathed in ignorance? Unacceptable! No. The clues are all around us. In understanding these truths, we honor their creation. Who will solve Widewen's legacy? Some church? Some warrior? It will be an animancer, or it will be no one at all. I have. Yes. No point in lying about it now that Ethelmore's involved. I asked for volunteers for our patients, a few brave souls came forward. I was very close at one time to a breakthrough. They understood that. They understood their sacrifices would mean something. I need access to the North Ward. Out of the question. This patient is in isolation for a reason. I've been given permission. You best My cooperate. My answer is no. Whatever you're looking for, those patients will not be able to help you. The head warden will stand by me on this. I heard you were demoted. How did it happen? What's under your concern? Did one of the others put this up to you? Odmer, that smug weasel? Things went wrong. Everything. I don't know how. I'll never know. <laughs> okay. Looking for an expert on awakenings. Go bother someone else. You're a prick. A simple test. That settled. Ooh, armor. Some kind of a cool armor. Defense while stunned, that's all prone, light armor. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, let's try to get into the, uh, let's we'll try to get into the north ward on our own. Also, I want to talk to this purple dude. Flesh construct. I guess that's a normal thing to have in an asylum. It's like a guard. Well, they're everywhere, hey? I mean, I guess it makes sense for animancers to have them because I suppose putting a semblance of a soul into a um, into a body uh, or, or animating flesh would be under their purview as well. Cool. So the world is really starting to feel a lot more realized to me as we go through. I mean, obviously, that's what happens. It's feeling a little less like, here's a bunch of confusing proper nouns you don't really care about, and becoming more about, like, I'm actually learning some things about the, uh, about the world and, and getting invested in what that might mean. Let's see, how do I get back here? Oh, that's another door. Okay. Let's try to go talk to this guy. Wicked's in that cell. Okay, yep. So I need a key. Now, what does my quest say? Quest says Cadmonezo is the Cadmonezo is the only one with access to the North Ward. All right.
What is it now? So I need perception 13, but... She's a patient! Fine. Speak okay, that worked. Good <laughs> it will do me good. It'll let me continue the game. And that's all that I care about. Because I'm a PC. Hey. Right. Let's take a look in the North Ward. Oh, that's the face guy. Alright. Here we go. This man has the look in his eyes of a hunted animal, and at your approach he staggers backward to the far corner of his cell, halfway appearing as though you climb the walls to get him further away from you. I need to ask you some questions. It was about to speak, and the words come out are half formed as though her tongue were cut out. Possible for you to discern if they're words at all. Mutilations of animancy. Crueler than any torture to disfigure the soul. Let us return the favor to the animancers of this shit heap. Frail said you're being treated by Cademan Azo. Looks at you with uncertainty, slowly, tenderly, steps closer to the front of his cell. You perceive his soul within your ken. It's misshapen, so maimed by a jagged instrument. Let's take a look at it. Standing at the door is a rotund, balding man. His upper teeth and pointy nose remind you of a rat. Nezu. In darkness, you find against unseen restraints, cold metal circumstances the crown of your head and breadth of your chest. They're doing some experiments. <coughs> it hurts really bad. You take something from you. The flesh giant, the artificial being, but facing left. The boy with inter the boy looks with interest at the giant, then collapses the floor like a shed snakeskin. Giant convulses and writes itself, turns away, and leaves. Nods at you and walks back to the end of his cell. Speak with the patient at the end of the These hall. Poor people. This isn't the treatment that they were promised upstairs by the cushioned seats and lush carpets. Is that the cure for soul sickness? To be thrown into a cell and subjected to the whims of your captor? If all were treated like this, the sanitary may never survive. What do these patients do to warrant these conditions? Here's the source of all knowledge you were so giddy about. Ushgrim. A willowy adolescent boy stands in the corner of his cell, gawkish and stoop shoulders. He stares straight ahead, the occasional blink is only movement. It's unclear whether he registers your present at all. Behind his glassy, doll like eyes. In this state, the barriers between your soul and his are thin and porous, easily bypassed, if you should wish it. You close your eyes and edge forward toward the boy's soul, and as you near, a sudden malaise comes over you. You're cold and warm all at once, sweating and shivering and straining for breath, as you did on the caravan journey. The soul you approach is the wrong one, a parasitic plant that strangles its host. It's predatory and pitiless, and you've crossed paths with it before. Heavy. You are rushing toward the golem now, bodiless as a gust of wind. Quickly, you think to yourself, quickly, and you feel the strength hemorrhaging from your soul as you dart towards its makeshift abomination. You pass into the golem shell and overtake the soul implanted within, encircling it, suppressing, containing this new vessel, you're strong again. You step heavy-footed down corridors, unheeded by the other constructs, and scrutinized only by the wary, unworthy, untrustworthy eyes of the mad, coming at last to an office piled with books and scribbled paper and the perverse implements of animancy. You send your oversized hands on a large machine, a nest of globes and tubes and coils in the center of the room and go to work. Your surroundings are pulled past you, or perhaps you're pulled past them and they dissolve into a blur. When they settle into place again, you're outside on a clear day, standing in front of a crowd stacked high above you in the tiered seats of an amphitheater. You're acting for the crowd, standing deliberately still, though this is no play. 
A balding man with rodent-like features is strapped to, to a machine, the one you had tampered with. You see your arms for the first time, short and fleshy, unmistakably those of a little girl, but this body is not truly yours. Your mind still holds the same determination, the same hard-heartedness as before. The body itself is cold and vacuous. The man speaks, and the crowd applauds with an enthusiasm worthy of a hero's entrance. Bear witness, he says, and pulls a lever. The machine shivers and sparks, and a bead of sweat rolls down the side of the man's brow, but the crowd's apprehension quickly gives way to awe as a crystal glow fills with radiant mist and casts the entire theater aglow. He opens a valve, and the glow crawls through a tube along a length of copper wiring that runs to a set of electrodes beneath your armpits. Feel nothing when it reaches you, as it should be, for you've been leading his work astray periodically for some time, altering notes and settings and playing puppeteer for Holoborn. You make it look how people would expect it to look when a body is infused with a soul. In a moment, the machine goes dark and the man unstraps you, eyeing you with a scientist's concern. This is dark and cool. <laughs> he looks back up at the crowd. Behold, he says. There's obvious hesitation in his voice. Slowly, you take a plotting step forward, then another and another. You look up at the man, giving him the eye contact of which no Holoborn is capable, and the crowd gasps. The man is relieved. How do you feel? He asks at a volume meant for the crowd, and this is the moment. At the top of your lungs, you let out a piercing shriek. The man comes toward you, hand outstretched, but you run the other way, back to the machine. With all your strength, you drive your head in the crystal globe, and it shatters, streaking your head with warm blood. You drive your head down into the surface of the machine again and again, drawing panic screams to the crowd. And by the time the man reaches you, your body has ceased proper function and merely twitches on the cold ground. Satisfied, you depart the corpse in search of another unsuspecting host. Who could put their faith in animancy now? They're pulled again from your surroundings, transcending the boundaries of memory and lifetime. Deeper and deeper past betrayals and murders and lies upon lies that form the thick webbing of plots behind beyond mortal comprehension. You settle on a last room you've seen before, expansive, with a tall device encasing the Adra monolith at its center. The room is filled with people, and the people look all at the device. So this, I think they're describing the big thing. You're yanked suddenly back to reality, and the once catatonic boy is just looking directly at you, appraising, calculating. There's no mistaking now the soul of the man who caused your awakening that gazes out from the borrowed husk. A watcher. You made me into a watcher. I need you to undo it. I believe we share a common past. I'm just looking for some answers. Is that so? He makes no effort to hide his disinterest, but continues to search your eyes. He makes a slight grunting sound, noise. His eyes soften for an instant. It seems for a moment he recognizes you. He opens his mouth to speak and then seems to think better of it. His jaw tightens. I wonder why this isn't giving us, um... Yeah, I wonder why this isn't giving us, like, voiceover, because it seems important. I know your look. You hunger. Hunger for answers that elude you. It gnaws at your soul. You soup your reason for being. You're like everyone. I will help you let go. He dodges backwards with startling grace, putting himself out of reach. On his face, there's no malice, only the dispassion of a farmer putting down a sick animal. And suddenly, he slumps forward. Of course. Evil, spooky, purple shit. So, that's a shame. I'm not able to, um, like, subdue these folks. Like, they're innocent. Why are they attacking me? That's a shame. Yes. Huh? Yes. No, I don't want to AOE that. I want to pick a target. Here we go. Oh my god. Forget that. It's fireball time. What? Alright, let's get some buffs going. Yes. 
get everybody focused again. Okay. Looks like that was a success. And success in a way that's a bit weird. I don't know why I had to kill all these crazed patients. But... Oh well. Such is, uh, such is the way of things, I suppose. Oh yeah. So, so many bloodstone. Alright. So... He possesses those with weak souls, so it wasn't Azo's fault. He's just a jerk. And maybe, maybe I've passed them along to a better life. Where we can pretend. Let's go. Okay, so that's been uh, about uh, about an hour there. It's just after five now, so um, I'm going to uh, save my game, and we will stop for today.